Graves' disease is characterized by thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulins, and this is how I was diagnosed with Graves' disease, as I was first diagnosed with hyperthyroidism, and then I had the thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulins tested and found out they were elevated. In this video, I'm going to discuss these antibodies, and I'll go over some patient reports so you can better understand this marker. Before I begin, I just want to remind you that the main reason I put together these videos is to help people with different types of autoimmune conditions and other health issues better understand the test results so that they can find and remove their triggers, correct any underlying imbalances, and feel great again. Let's discuss a few basics about thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulins. The thyroid-stimulating hormone receptor is mainly found on the surface of thyroid cells. Thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulins bind to this receptor and stimulate the overproduction of thyroid hormone. Graves' disease is characterized by elevated thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulins in the presence of hyperthyroidism. Some labs don't test for the thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulins, but instead will test for thyrotropin receptor antibodies, or TSH receptor antibodies. So thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulins are the most common type of TSH receptor antibody, with another being the thyrotropin-blocking antibodies. Unlike thyroid-stimulating antibodies, the thyrotropin-blocking antibody blocks the TSH receptor to prevent TSH from binding, and this action essentially causes hypothyroidism. Let's take a look at the reference range for thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulins. With thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulins, not only does the reference range differ from lab to lab, but there are two different units used. As in the past, labs used to use a percentage, and while some labs still do this, other labs are using a different unit of measurement. So with a lab such as LabCorp, you'll see that they use the units I use per liter, and their reference range is 0 to 0.55 international units per liter. On the other hand, Quest Diagnostics uses a percentage, and so their normal range for thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulins is less than 140%. So since there are different units used, the optimal range will vary depending on the lab, although I'll say here that for labs that use a percentage, I like to see the thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulins less than 80%. So let's take a look at some reports. So here we see that this lab uses the percentage and the range is less than 140%, and this person is clearly elevated as her thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulins are 416. And in this case, we see the reference range is 0 to 0.55 IUs per liter, and this person's TSI also elevated 1.47. And so here we see an example where the thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins clearly elevated. Once again, a percentage is used here, even though a different range here, it says less than 122%, but either way, clearly elevated greater than 500%. And we see other markers. This person clearly hyperthyroid with TSH depressed and free T3, free T4 elevated. And they also have elevated thyroid peroxidase antibodies as well as thyroglobulin antibodies. So this person has the antibodies for both Graves' disease and Hashimoto's. And here we see an example of a thyrotropin receptor antibody. And so this person is elevated at 2.98 and the lab uses a range of 0 to 1.75 IUs per liter. Stress is a big factor in many people with Graves' disease, which is why I recommend testing adrenals in just about all my patients. One of the most popular videos on this channel is entitled, What's the Best Test for Adrenal Fatigue? And so I definitely would check this out. Of course, if you have any questions related to thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins, please let me know in the comments below.